you may be aware that last night at city council meeting, the members voted in favor of an ordinance to ban panhandling. Panhandling, most often the begging for money at intersections, is uh, rather annoying. However, the Libertarian Party of Duval County opposes this ordinance, and more it's more than just a dislike for government. But first, let's take a quick summary from new, uh, News for Jack's clip, and then we'll go ahead and get into it. You can get a ticket or even be arrested for giving money to somebody on the side of the road or in an intersection panhandling. And so last night, the city council passed a bill designed to crack down on panhandling to make the roads safer. News for Jack's reporter Ashley Harding is joining us now live. And Ashley, there will be a grace period. Yes, Jen and Bruce, it is going to be a 30-day grace period, and JSO says that it's going to be out in the community educating people about this new change. Now, to put this change in simplest terms, people would not be allowed to stand in medians or the roadways for extended periods of time and solicit money, but it also applies to the person inside the car. They would not be allowed to engage either. The final vote last night was 16 to 3, an overwhelming majority of city council leaders signing off in favor of cracking down on panhandling in roadways and medians. Following the 30-day grace period, the bill calls for penalties that include up to a $100 fine for a first offense. On a second violation, the offender would get a warning and possibly a trespassing notice. Repeat offenders may be arrested for up to 10 days. I don't believe in arresting People, I think, you know, I, I supported this because it 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 addressed a lot of the safe a lot of the safety issues. But I would tell you, my folks don't have a hundred dollars, you know, to get out. So I'm I'm really depending on, you know, public safety to kind of help get the word out. Um, we got to do a really good job at marketing. Several council members echo to those thoughts about public safety. After it passed, Councilman Kevin Carrico, who introduced it, released a statement to further explain it, saying the bill does not outlaw the act of panhandling in the city. It makes any physical interaction, commercial use or occupancy of public rights of ways, medians and roadways illegal in our most heavily traveled roadways. Jacksonville recently ranked sixth in the nation for pedestrian injuries and fatalities. We can neither do something about it or just ignore the issue. The bill does allow an exception for charities as long as they get a permit first. Having people walking around your car, distracting people at intersections, walking around with pets, walking around with children at busy intersections, and you want to talk about public safety? Man, I can't think of something more dangerous than cars running through there. All right, so... Sounds great, right? I mean, isn't it city council's job to protect citizens? We'd like to think they'd have the uh, – uh, we'd like to think they would operate in facts, though, before they, they would even attempt to do so. The ordinance that they voted on, 2022, which was last year, 574, um, it lists a bunch of whereas clauses at the very beginning. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a whereas clause, there is simply a series of stated facts that support whatever legislation that is going to follow. Think of it like saying, because my spouse works until 6 p.m. and because the drive home takes at least 30 minutes and because I want my spouse to enjoy a warm meal after a hard day at work, that would be the whereas clause. And then it would go on to say something like, therefore, I will not start dinner until 6.15. So basically, the whereas clause just kind of gives some information, some background as to why whatever that is being proposed in the legislation is being proposed. The seven whereas clauses list several that appear to support an ordinance against panhandling, but they really don't. Let's take a look at one. All right. So whereas in a study. Dated September 21st, the Florida Department of Transportation evaluated Florida pedestrian and bicycle safety strategies to combat the comparatively high percentage. Florida ranks the second highest ranked state in the country for vehicle pedestrian deaths and recommended enhanced, quote, legislation, regulations, policies, and programs to support the overall goal of eliminating fatal and serious in injury crashes. All right, so that's what that's what one of the whereas clauses says. However, if we look at the document, so we, we look at that September 2021 Florida Department of Transportation document, and guess what? Panhandling isn't even mentioned in the document. In fact, 
I pulled up the document, Florida Pedestrian and Bicycle uh, Bicycle Strategic Safety Plan, September 2021. I believe this is the exact same one that, city, that the whereas clauses were mentioning. So if we go on over to page 24, we find something very interesting. So we see that it says, dispelling crash myths. So myth number one, the very first one listed. Crashes involving people walking and biking usually occur at intersections. However, it says the fact is that the majority of pedestrian crashes are reported to occur away from intersections. And if we look down here at the nice little graphic that they have provided, we see that pedestrians make up 26% uh, of all accidents, not fatalities, all accidents at intersections. What we could not find was any specific data regarding what percentage of that 26%, 26% were panhandling versus something else like simply walking or crossing the street. Now it is true that Duval ranks high compared to other cities as shown here on page 22. And we can see that we are the one, two, three, four, fifth one down, ranking relatively high above all of these other cities. But again, we're evaluating the claim of safety. And so far, this bill does not identify what percentage of accidents actually involve the act of panhandling. But there's more reason to oppose this bill. As city council member Pittman in the video clip that we just saw said, people don't have $100. The most likely reason that they're begging at an intersection is because they don't have money or very little money. In other words, we're going to find people $100 who are already don't have money. Furthermore, this bill outlines penalties based on incremental punishment. Now, you saw that in the video clip where they said, hey, on the first offense, you'll have this. On the second offense, you'll have this. And so you see that for the first offense, an offender is given an educational notice from JSO. On the second offense, they will receive an official warning and they may be trespassed. And then the third offense, a civil citation, think of this like receiving a traffic ticket instead of a warning, like on the second offense. And then finally, the fourth violation is subject to being arrested. The ordinance is presented as for safety to cut down on pedestrian vehicle accidents. Yet only 26% of all pedestrian, uh, all, all pedestrian accidents even occur at intersections. It's unknown what number are even related to panhandling. And finally, the bill to ensure safety of citizens takes a very gradual approach. You get an educational warning, then you get um, an official warning, then you may get a citation, then you get arrested. Safety doesn't seem to be very a very big priority here, does it? But we're not done yet. Remember in the news for Jack's clip where they said the driver may be cited? That's where the news reporter was sitting in the car holding some dollar bills. Oh, yeah. If someone is asking for money and I roll down my window and I give them a $5 bill, I may be cited as well. In other words, the city of Jacksonville has just made it a crime for one consenting adult to ask and receive money from another consenting adult just because the transaction is occurring at an intersection. The Libertarian Party firmly supports the idea of two consenting adults engaging in consenting behavior, such as asking for and giving money. Now, it may not be ideal when you're waiting in traffic for another person to, uh, that's driving to hand someone money, but that is a transaction between two consenting adults and government simply has no place in preventing it. Now, some people have cited aggressive panhandling as a problem banging on windows, grabbing door handles, and so forth. We do oppose that behavior. That's aggression. And we support law enforcement getting involved anytime one person is aggressing on, on, uh, at another. But we have to draw the line with ordinances that are not really rooted in fact, because when they are not, it's likely that none of the problems that they're trying to solve will be solved. If you want to solve the real problem of pedestrian and cycling accidents, then identify when and where they occur and have an honest conversation about what can be done. More than likely, the issue is not really a criminal one, but one where the situation creates a conflict. For instance, when I first moved to Jacksonville, 
I happened to cycle down Bay Meadows between Southside and Phillips Highway once. Any accident that might have occurred would likely not have been a criminal in nature, but it would have been two people trying to get from point A to point B and finding that the situation, for whatever reason, was unsuitable to fit both in that moment. In the particular example I cite, down Bay Meadows between Southside and Phillips Highway, you know that there is absolutely no place for a cyclist. This was a lesson that I learned and why it's only happened once. If you want to solve the issue of panhandling, then you need to address the larger problem, and that's the need for money. This ordinance does nothing to change the very reason that people are begging at intersections. We'd be better off finding local organizations that seek to help the very people that and th those very people and donating to them. Much better than criminalizing what would other what is otherwise or should otherwise be con considered consenting adult behavior. If you have some organizations in town that you believe work with beggars, drop them in the comments. We need to start spreading the word. This is simply not a good bill because it doesn't really address the issue of safety, nor does it address the root cause. With that said, please be safe and guard your liberty. Have a great one.